in this stage. Also, during this stage, the blood in the embryo does not circulate until the end of the third week. Thus, the embryo at this stage is like a clot of blood. So the three meanings of the word alakata correspond accurately to the descriptions of the embryo at the alakata stage. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and the girl Fanny Lungu. And we are Fanny and Jesse. Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction. But before we get into the reaction, guys, we wanna do we wanna thank everybody who's been subscribing to our channel, you're the realest MVP. Also, we wanna thank the people who've been suggesting reaction to us, you're also the realest MVP. Our goal is to get to 10,000 subscribers and also the purpose of this channel is just to you know learn and uh, try to react to each and every video that you guys want to give it to us another thing is if you're new to this channel we are finding just say we do a lot of reaction videos you can give us whatever kind of reaction you have you are not limited to any kind of reaction we can do anything just let us know in the comment section and we're going to do it for you so right about now what we're going to do is we're going to do this uh, fact from the quran will blow your mind Guaranteed, so let's find out if it's gonna blow our mind or not. So, without any further ado, guys, let's get it. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. I hope you are well. In this video, we'll talk about human embryo. In the Holy Quran, God speaks about the stage of man's embryonic development. In the Quran, we created man from an extract of clay, then we made him as a drop in a place of settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into an alakata, leech, or suspended thing, or blood clot. Then we made the alakata into a mudvata, chewed substance. Literally, the Arabic word alakata has three meanings, leech, suspended thing, and blood clot. In comparing a leech to an embryo in the alakata stage, we find similarity between the two, as we can see in figure 1. Also, the embryo at this stage obtains nourishment from the blood of the mother, similar to the leech, which feeds on the blood of others. Drawings illustrating the similarities in appearance between a leech and human embryo at the alakata stage. Leech drawing from human development as described in the Quran and Sunnah. The embryo attaches itself to the mother to feed, just like a leech attaches itself to a host to feed. The embryo also looks like a leech. The embryo looks like a leech, but these pictures are magnified by microscope. Nobody knew this 1400 years ago. However, this was portrayed in the Quran. Allahu Akbar. The second meaning of the word alakata is suspended thing. This is what we can see in figures 2 and 3. The suspension of the embryo during the alakata stage in the womb of the mother. We can see in this diagram the suspension of an embryo during the alakata stage in the womb, uterus of the mother. In this photo micrograph we can see the suspension of an embryo marked B during the alakata stage, about 15 days old, in the womb of the mother. The actual size of the embryo is about 0.6 mm. Subhanallah. The third meaning of the word alakata is blood clot. We find that the external appearance of the embryo and its sacs during the alakata stage is similar to that of a blood clot. This is due to the presence of relatively large amounts of blood present in the embryo during this stage. Also, during this stage, the blood in the embryo does not circulate until the end of the third week. Thus, the embryo at this stage is like a clot of blood. So the three meanings of the word alakata correspond accurately to the descriptions of the embryo at the alakata stage. The next stage mentioned in the verse is the mudgata stage. The Arabic word mudgata means chewed substance. If one were to take a piece of gum and chew it in his or her mouth and then compare it with an embryo at the mudgata stage, we would conclude that the embryo at the mudgata stage acquires the appearance of a chewed substance. This is because of the somites at the back of the embryo that somewhat resemble teeth marks in a chewed substance. Photograph of an embryo at the mudgata stage, 28 days old. The actual size of the embryo is 4 mm. 
when comparing the appearance of an embryo at the mudgada stage with a piece of gum that has been chewed, we find similarity between the two. Drawing of an embryo at the mudgata stage, we can see here the somites at the back of the embryo that look like a teeth marks. Subhanallah! How could Prophet Muhammad have possibly known all this 1400 years ago? When scientists have only recently discovered this using advanced equipment and powerful microscopes which did not exist at that time. Ham and Anthony Van were the first scientists to observe human sperm cells using an improved microscope in 1677, more than 1000 years after Muhammad Professor Keith Leon Moore is one of the world's most prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology and is the author of the book entitled The Developing Human, which has been translated into eight languages. This book is a scientific reference work and was chosen by a special committee in the United States as the best book authored by one person. In 1981, during the seventh medical conference in Dhamam, Saudi Arabia, Professor Moore said, it has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God. Consequently, Professor Moore was asked the following question. Does this mean that you believe that the Quran is the word of God? He replied, I find no difficulty in accepting this. Allahu Akbar. How could a man who lived 1400 years ago have known how an embryo looks like? Brothers and sisters, if you like this video, then give this video a like and share this video to your friends and family. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. What do you think? Um, do you ever wonder why the Quran has certain details, goes in depth when it comes to certain things? Nope. You don't? You think it's just normal? It's not normal. Um, Hence my question, do you ever wonder why it goes into details when it comes to certain things? Maybe it, it, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, cause through Mohammed, you know, Mohammed knew these things even before the scientists. Yeah. Yeah, so probably, that's why it's so, what do you call it, it's so mind-blowing because if Mohammed knew these things before even like the scientists, that was like 1400. Uh, years ago or something, then that's really amazing. Which means... That's really amazing. Which means, um... What I'm trying to say is, do we really need scientists then? Don't you think certain things are actually in these holy books? Yeah, because <clears throat> uh, these religious books, they are... Um, they are more, most, of, most of them are scientific, you get it? It's more of like the Bible is more of a surgical book. You get it. If you if, if you read the Bible, you will understand there's some signs in there that are more cosmic and whatnot. I think also the Quran. I think so. Mm. Yeah. Not sure. What do you think? I think it's mind blowing. If somebody who lived in the in the year 1400, uh, whatever time. Trust me, if he can be able to uh, demystify this all uh, the, the the embryo and whatever thing without even having the mic, what do you call this the the microscope? How how human are you? Like how how possible can you do that? You get it? that means he was a, a messenger. He was a prophet, just like the video. Was he a prophet? Yeah, he was a prophet and messenger thing. I mean, this is so mind blowing. Like it's, it's really even hard. It's hard to believe that he could do all these things. Like, I mean, even nowadays, you can't. Somebody like me can't figure out until they use a microscope or something. But I, 
probably, I don't know, it's so, it's so unbelievable anyway. You have the knowledge and you came to share with people. Yeah. I don't know, maybe there's people who can do that. But then I'm sure they still ignored it until scientists. Yeah. Maybe they called him a, a magician. <laughs> Maybe anything is possible. Maybe they're like, ah, oh, this guy is a magician. You know when, when, when you do something and then people don't know how to explain that? They're not familiar with it. Yeah, familiar with that and then they start calling you a magician. I believe also probably Jesus was called a magician. Probably even Muhammad, I don't know, probably. I'm just saying anyway. Anyway guys, if you feel like you'd react to this video in a better way, you give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down in the comment section and tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction. And what do you feel about this video right here? This fact from the Quran will blow your mind, guaranteed. Just let us know in the comment section. What do you think? Did it blow your mind that Muhammad knew all this thing uh, way back? And uh, now this is when the scientists have discovered that uh, about the embryo and all these type of things. I feel like it's so mind blowing for me. You think is it mind blowing, or you think it's just anybody can do that without no the one, help of? No one can do that. It is mind blowing. And just yeah. stuck here. So how did these people not? It's just it's insane. I don't even know what to think. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. And the most important thing, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The more you keep on subscribing, the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better, better content. And last but not the least, we're gonna see you in the next video. Peace out.